Welcome to Startup Health Now, the weekly web show that celebrates the healthcare transformers and change makers that are reimagining healthcare. My name is Unity Stokes, and we're here at Health Data Palooza in Washington, D.C. Um, very excited to have a great conversation today with Tim Davenport the CEO of Consumable Science. Uh, Tim is an amazing entrepreneur. He's the former president of Revolution Health and also the CEO of Sermo. So stick around. We're going to have a great discussion and a great show. Thank you. It is the duty of leaders to lead, of the creative to create, of the daring to do. The free world expects leadership of us. Its fate and our fate depends upon our leadership. We are industrious, inventive, restless, with the fires that burn within us. Well, I say that nothing is easy, and the best things are the hardest. And all our troubles, all our immense difficulties, now and in the future, can I say, be solved if we have the will, the courage. The future is to those who take those who take it. So welcome, Tim. It's wonderful to have you here. We're actually at the, the Health Data Palooza uh, conference here in Washington, D.C., and just uh, so excited to meet you and so excited to learn about uh, consumable science. So thanks for being here. Well, thank you for having us. So just to kick things off, um, what is consumable science? Maybe share the, the mission and vision for, for the company. All right. Well, our core mission is based on some new research that's being done that we're sponsoring being done by a group of scientists out of Johns Hopkins. And these uh, researchers are experts in biomarkers. And we have a basic thesis that there's an unmet need in the health marketplace that can be met by helping people better understand their core set of biomarkers and how it affects their health and what they can do to be healthier. So, so how do you think, um, what's missing in the market? What's needed to really make people healthier and understand these, these biomarkers? Well, one, one situation we like to uh, describe because it connects with a lot of people, helps them understand the need we're trying to, to meet, is for people who have had a blood test, gone to a doctor, um, typically that experience involves three pages of 80 different values. They don't understand what all the data means. The doctor probably only explains if you have a problem. And, and sometimes our, they don't even ever see that. They data. don't even see the data. And our basic view is there's a lot of information in those biomarkers that's being lost uh, and not shared with the patient. And that's the so problem we like is to solve. This, is the concept then, and we'll, we'll dig into some detail here, but is this um, a service for consumers or, or for doctors or for who's, who's really using uh, yeah. the service and who's the customer? Well. Our focus is on individuals, but it has such broad applicability, we're finding that a lot of people in it are interested in what we're doing and trying to figure out how they might use it. But at the core of this, we want to be key to patient engagement. Uh, we think this is a way for people to fundamentally better understand their health and again start to think about how their behaviors can improve their health over time. And that's a pretty big idea. It is, and it, it, it's, you know, we know all sorts of information about how our car is operating or our, how our bank account's doing or our, uh, you know, stocks are doing, but not enough about how we are doing as, as people. So is that really what you're... That, that's right solving? on it. That's right on it. And what we have learned from our first wave of science, and our science is going to be ongoing, is that there are really seven key biomarkers that we think accurately capture your biological signature, your profile, if you will, and taken together give you a very accurate picture of your current health and a forecast of your future health. So it's very different than just getting a cholesterol number. It's getting a combination of your cholesterol number with six other biomarkers and understanding, or at least us giving you a picture of how they correlate and add up to your overall health. So you, you have designed um, a health score. Uh, talk to us a little bit about what that is and, and how it works. Right. Well, um, it's called My Body Score, and again, it's based entirely on the science of biomarkers. And the way it works is we're taking advantage of some exciting new developments in blood testing labs, where basically we can take a couple drops of blood, put them on a piece of paper, put it in a plastic casing, send it to a lab, and a week later, you have My Body Score. Uh, my Body Score can be presented simply on a smartphone, um, where you immediately see a score, we put it on a FICO credit score scale to help it connect with uh, the average uh, individual. And then we provide some information about what your seven biomarkers are and how they add up to your score. Wow, so does the 
consumer go into like a lab to get their blood drawn and or, or do they do this in home? How, how does this work? Well, our, our starting plan is to actually offer this to employers. Okay. Where a large number of employers are already doing some type of blood screening on site. So what we want to do is come in and add a lot more value uh, on top of just getting a single cholesterol number. So um, the way it works, uh, the way we're piloting it is to go into employers have them offer this as a value-added service on top of an existing blood screening. Wow, and you know, I know um, some doctors today say, wow, I've already got too much information. Right. Um, and you, you come in, and, and there was recently, I think, a little controversy online with Mark Cuban, who um, yes. had tweeted that he wanted, or, and for those who could afford it, uh, you know, get your blood tested quarterly and keep a record of that right. so that when you, you know, maybe have a problem, you can go into your doctor with a whole dossier of, of history. Right. Um, how often are you, w would the people get their, their blood drawn and what's your thoughts on sort of right. this too much data concept? Well, um, I don't think that's a problem and I agree with what Mark said and we, we help solve that in a lot of ways. First of all, we are the product that would collect, that have the history of your data. Uh, we make it easy to get the data from the lab right into your phone and see your results. We put it into some context for you. Um, here's what those results mean in terms of an overall score and what it says about what you could do to be healthier. Um, I think most doctors really welcome the chance to have a patient come in who has some of that data, understands what it means, and is asking some very direct questions. And that's certainly what we've learned in our early pilots. Yeah. And um, I, I, I fully agree and I, you know, I'm part of this quantified self movement, and you know, the more access um, as a patient uh, to data and information right. I can get, the better. And as a consumer as well. I mean, right. um, so would so first you're working with employers. Does this get to the point where um, consumers can pay for this out of their own pocket? How how we, expensive is this? We think so. Yes. And back to your previous question, um, we think it, it could make sense to screen once a quarter. Um, again, with a test that only involves a couple of drops of blood, we're talking about a test that costs $30. Yeah. Uh, so it's certainly economically feasible to do it several times a year. Um, and we're trying to make that as easy as possible. So an employer armed with this information or a, an individual armed with this information, what's possible? What, what can they start to do with it? Well, again, we piloted this with a a handful of employers so far, we're learning a lot. Um, we see three very key benefits. First of all, for individuals who have had blood tests in the past, like we described a minute ago. For, minute, for them, there's a, a bit of a eureka moment. Wow, I, I knew there was a lot of information in those results. I never saw it or understood it. And now I start with a score that basically tells me how am I doing against the rest of the population. Am I the 70th percentile or the 20th percentile? So from the, set, the context setting of an overall score, then here are the seven key biomarkers and some education about how, how they work together and what they mean for your health. So for individuals that's a, who understand a blood test and had it before, that's very powerful. We're also finding there's a lot of people that haven't been to the doctor in five years. Right. Uh, younger people, typical 30-year-old, may not even have a doctor yet. And for them, this is an effective health checkup. If you're not feeling bad, there's no reason to go to the doctor. But it can be very valuable to see this data and understand if everything's good, you're fine. If you have a value that's looking a little out of line, um, you should be aware of it. You'd see it in your score, and you might then go into doctor. It becomes like an early warning system. Exactly, yeah. exactly. A critical value tells you you have something to keep an eye on. And then third, there's a lot of benefit to the sponsors who may offer this to individuals, an employer. Because we can go in then give them some population data, which we're finding is very exciting. So if a thousand person company had 800 people screened, we can go back in and show them what the average health is of their, of their workforce, how that compares to the population at large. They've never had anything like that. Compares, it's, very, it's very valuable compared to looking at claims data, which they've often done in the past. Here's a current snapshot of how healthy your workforce is. And then further, we're able to use the science to help you understand where you, uh, where you have some unhealthy populations. Do you have more smokers than usual? Do you have more people with a diabetic risk than average. And we see early evidence this is going to help employers better target their wellness programs where they're already spending a lot of money. Have you, have you 
or how have you dealt with any issues around privacy or maybe uh, individuals are concerned about their employer having access to, to this data? Does that come up? It's critically important. And you know, our, our starting point with the technology is to build a very sophisticated back end that's completely secure and enables the data to be kept very private. One of our premise, one of our tenets that we communicate to individuals is no one will see this data but you. You can choose to let other people see it, but only you will see it. And it stays with you for the rest of your life. So if you change employers, it is your account, it is your my body score, it goes with you wherever you go. Um, but absolutely privacy is important and we've we've made a big investment to deliver that. Wonderful one. So shifting gears just a little, um, you've had so many uh, wonderful experiences building companies. Um, wondering, uh, so you were uh, at running uh, Revolution Health yes. and, and also uh, Sermo, um, which I think was one of the early um, companies that was really shaking things up with uh, a new era of, of uh, Health 2 companies coming right. into the sector. You guys right. were really one of the early ones. Um, what, what's your take on the market today and, and how things have evolved over the last decade or so um, and, and where things are going with, with health innovation, healthcare innovation? Sure. Well, if you go back to Revolution Health, which is now almost 10 years old, and a lot of great thought leadership that Steve Case and team he put together um, came up with to make the early investment in Revolution Health, and I joined them to run it. Um, there was a lot of good thinking, very inspirational thoughts around what we can do to really democratize, democratize health. I'll let you take control of your information and better understand your health and be more thoughtful about your behaviors that can improve your health. Um, it's now almost 10 years later, um, and um, the thing I'm most excited about are new technologies, new businesses that can, that can deliver on that. My body score is one of many that I see out there, but for me the most Interesting this thing that's developed and is going to play out over the next decade is what are the tools, what are the services, what are the businesses that are really going to fundamentally engage individuals in a way we haven't done before? Do you feel like we're still at the, the beginning of this cycle of innovation or how far along the, the spectrum are, are we? Well, I feel like we're very much in the early 90s in the internet. It's very much the early days. You can see the potential. The challenge now is to build the real products that connect with people and actually work. Um, and I think that's what we're on the cusp of. So if you could wave a magic wand and, and uh, change some of the big challenges that are in the way, uh, either for your particular company or the industry, um, that would help help the innovation sort of accelerate more quickly, what, what, would, what would your wish be? Um, there would be a, a lot. Um, <laughs> I think top of the list would be uh, enabling employers, because that's where you know that's where the plans are put together, that's where the money is being spent, that's where someone's overseeing a group of people and hopefully caring about their health. I'd like to see all the things we can put in place to get them out of worrying about the insurance design part of that and get them to fundamentally how can I make my people more healthy? How can I enable my people to make themselves more healthy? That's what I'd love to make happen overnight. That's fantastic. And what about um, advice to entrepreneurs maybe just getting started today? There's a lot of new talent uh, coming into the ecosystem from outside of healthcare. Right. Um, what would your, your words of wisdom be to these the upstarts um, or, or even serial entrepreneurs that are coming into healthcare for the first time? My message would be the, the water's great, come on in, especially if you're a lot younger than I am. We yeah. need you. Yeah. Um, the lesson to learn, but it's only to learn as context and then figure out how you can change it, is that it's a very consolidated industry, as we all know. It's the largest industry in the country. It's critically important. It's large, and I think that's gotten in the way historically of fundamental innovation. Do you think that will begin to be disintermediated or fragmented? Is there a way to go around the established players, like has happened in the music industry or pretty much every other industry where they the upstarts just reinvent what's possible or in healthcare do you really have to find other types of collaborations and work within the system? Yeah, I think we'll see both. Certainly some break the rules new businesses will be great to see and there's some of them on uh, coming online. But what, what, what I have found is a lot of appetite among the existing players to figure out how to do this better. 
whether it's the payers or the providers or down the employers where we're spending some time right now. People get it. We're spending a lot of money. People aren't getting healthier. People want to figure out how to do this better. I think sometimes there's lacking some innovative new ideas and approaches that might make that happen. Yeah, I totally agree. And I, I think just when Revolution was starting and, and Sermo and our, our previous company, Organized Wisdom, it was two years, or several years early. And now, the last three, four years, you're starting to see things open up um, where industries, employers are buying and, and uh, hospitals are buying and, and insurance companies are changing. And the real right. industry is starting to look at innovation and experiment both internally as well as with external innovation in very exciting ways. Um, so I think this, this um, is very exciting um, with, with what you guys are doing at Consumable Science. And, can't wait to, to get my, my body score. Good. Um, but just some parting words. What are your predictions for, for the future of the next couple of years? How optimistic are you? Um, what's going to happen in, in healthcare? Well, I, one thing I, you know, I think a lot about is that why haven't we seen more early stage companies go from no revenue to $100 million revenue in a few years? Um, we saw it decades ago with the internet. We've seen it around social media. I think we're absolutely going to see it in health. And Zenefits uh, is a good example. I mean, they're not a pure healthcare company, but at least you're seeing a service type model right. grow quickly. Right. And I think there's a whole mindset. You know, Apple's led this in a lot of industries. You know, music as a prime example. Interesting how they're now doing something very innovative in health around the watch. Um, I think a lot of it's just mindset around we really are ready to try some very new things. Old things aren't working so well. There's an acceptance of upstart companies that have a tough road ahead of them. They have a lot to prove out. But I think a willingness to help them and play with them and hope they, hope they make it work. So who do you think the big winners of the, the future will be in terms of who the big healthcare companies will be? Well, I don't... Same players as today or complete new, new deck? Yeah. Well, I certainly don't see the big players going away. But I think that uh, we're going to see whole new types of wellness companies that just fundamentally connect better with what the real health problem is in a population and address it. I think a tool like ours could be helpful there to measure year over year how much progress they're making. Um, I think we've already seen an exciting start to all sorts of things that just engage individuals about their health, the fitness trackers, my body score, watches. Um, uh, as happens in the early days, it's hard to figure out who's going to be the big winner and how it's going to all sort out. But again, I just see the ingredients in place that there are going to be some, some big, uh, large, some large companies created from scratch in the next 10 years, and I'm just delighted to be part of that. Wonderful. Well, thank you, Tim, for uh, being here today with Startup Help Now, and uh, look forward to getting my body score soon, hopefully. We, we will do that. Thank you. Thank you.